So the study we've done in New Jersey was really a retrospective study. And a lot of this stems from um, where did this problem begin? There was a study in November of 2015 coming from China. And in that study, they observed and made the discovery that colistin resistance, which we've known to exist, was now found on a mobile element. This is highly significant because the ability of these genes to move, so MCR, which is the gene they discovered, is mobile colistin resistance. And the fact that this was found in China is relatively significant because what we learned from the initial study that was published in Lancet was that the Chinese have been using colistin and polymyxin in animal feedlots for many, many years. They don't use it to treat patients. So it's appropriate for them to use this in animal feedlots. However, given the fact that colistin and polymyxin are now drugs that we use to treat patients in the United States and in Europe, against severe infections caused by carbapenem resistant um, enterobacteriaceae, this has become a clinical issue because we use colistin and now there's a report of colistin resistance found on a mobile element. With that finding, a lot of us, including my laboratory and others, um, started to be concerned whether we, in fact, in the United States, have colistin resistance on a mobile element, much like the Chinese discovered in their Lancet paper. So what we did was we did a retrospective analysis. We ended up looking at our strains in our collection. And in one case, we found an isolate from a patient from New Jersey Medical School, um, which actually had the MCR1 resistance gene um, in a strain of E. coli that this gentleman was harboring. The surprise was that this was a retrospective study. The man was actually hospitalized in August of 2014. And the finding that we found, um, the fact that MCR1 was present there, just tells us that A, um, these resistance genes have been found for a number of years, just undiscovered. And more importantly, in this particular case, we found this MCR1 gene in association with a strain of E. coli that was also carbapenem resistance. This was now the first report in the United States of a strain harboring both colistin resistance as well as carbapenem resistance. And the significance of this finding is that we use colistin to treat carbapenem resistant strains. In this particular instance, both carbapenem and colistin was not going to work because this particular E. coli strain actually picked up resistance to two different um, antibiotics. And the significance of that is that we now have an example of a patient in the United States harboring a strain of E. coli that essentially has two resistance genes, both of which are able to spread because both of them are on different plasmids.